Chapter Eight, The Poet of Poets. I used to write beautiful poems in those days. Even now, I can use chaste language in my discourses, but I am restraining myself to a certain extent, lest the translator may find it difficult to translate my language. One day, a provision shop owner by name Kote Subbanna, who used to sell some popular Ayurvedic medicines, also came to Puttaparthi on some work. He came to know that I could write beautiful poems, hence. He wanted to get some songs written by me for the propagation of the medicines sold in his shop. He inquired in the village about me thus: "I understand that there is a young boy in this village by name Raju. It seems he writes beautiful poems. Where does he live?" All people directed him to Subama's house. He approached Subama and inquired, "Mother, do you know anything about that boy Raju?" She gave a very good account of me, saying, "Dear son, I know him very well. He is a boy of good qualities, good habits, and good behavior. He teaches good things to people." On that day, she invited him for lunch in her house. During lunch, he sat alongside me. He was not very much impressed by my stature. He was not convinced of my capacity to write good poems. He confessed, "Raju." You seem to be very young. How can you undertake propaganda for my medicines? I am doubtful. I replied, "If you are doubtful of my talents, you need not come to me. Please leave me alone. You can go to someone in whom you have confidence and get your work done." So saying, I sent him away. Later, when I was sent to Kamalapuram for higher education, he approached me again, saying, "Raju." I heard that you write very good poetry. Look, if you can write a good poem for me, I will get a pair of shirt and trousers stitched for you. I told him bluntly, "Do not speak such words. Am I waiting for your charity? If you put forward such proposals, I will not talk to you even." Then he apologized to me. I also yielded a bit and told him, "Subana." I have nothing to do with the business of give and take. Hence, keep your business tactics aside. You tell me the name of your medicine, its salient features, and its efficacy. I will compose an appropriate song for that medicine. He stated that a new Ayurvedic medicine by name Bala Bhaskara has been received in his shop, and requested me to compose a song for propagating that medicine. He also explained. What were the different kinds of diseases which the medicine could cure? And said, "I will gather a few children who can learn that song and go about in the villages singing that song. That will be a good advertisement for the medicine." Accordingly, I composed the following song. 
కొరికే దొరికే బాల భాస్కర బాలకులారా తల్లి బాలకులారా కొరికే దొరికే బాల భాస్కర బాలకులారా కడుపు ఉద్బలను కాళ్ళవాతలు చేతి మౌనులను చెరుగుల నుండి అజాగర యొక్క ప్రసన్న నుండి అక్కుత్తుల వ్యాధుల నుండి అజింగ విరే చరమల నుండి అన్నిటికీ నేను బాగా ఉండండి అది మనలో ఆ అంగట్లో ఉంది కొరికే సుబ్బన్న అంగట్లానికి ఉండేది there it is there it is o oh children come come there is the medicine bala bhaskara beat an upset stomach or a swollen leg beat a joint pain or a flatulence be it any ailment known or unknown take this bala bhaskara for an instant cure if you wish to know where it is available there is the shop of kote supanna it is in that shop you can pick it up come here boys come here it is an excellent tonic prepared by the famous physician gopalacharya himself come here boys come here when he heard this song subarna was lost in joy completely he ran to his house immediately and brought a basket full of laddus and tried to offer me but i politely refused saying don't bring them to me you distribute all of them to the boys I don't touch sweets at all. Ever since my birth, I have not touched a sweet. I have plenty of sweetness in myself. My mind is sweet, my speech is sweet, and my love is sweet. Then, where is the necessity for all these sweets? I distributed all the sweets brought by Subarna to the children. Thus, ever since my childhood, I have been helping everybody and providing joy and happiness to one and all in fact that has been my main task kote subarna made the young boys sing the song in every street and every village nearby thus vigorous propaganda was conducted due to which the entire stock of bala bhaskara in his shop was sold out in no time he was extremely happy he brought two pairs of shirt and trousers for me to express his happiness and gratitude which i flatly refused saying subarna are you giving these clothes to me in return for the song i wrote for you the lord who receives offerings from the devotees lord venkateshwara is in tirupati i am not that lord i don't accept the articles brought by you he felt very unhappy and said that he would not take them back to his house thereupon i told him okay that is good then give them to the beggars outside thus my nature has always been to give to others and not to take from others my hand always gives to others does not accept anything from others but i am stretching my hand and asking you for only one thing that is pure and unsullied love even that love is not your property that is the property of god hence i am asking for my own property you are at present misusing this invaluable property of love you are expending the sacred and invaluable property in sundry pursuits that is why you are encountering sorrow when you dedicate this pure and unsullied love to god you will be the happiest person in this world once the stock of ayurvedic medicine bala bhaskara was completely sold out and subarna received good profit the other shopkeepers came to know about it and started making a bee line to me with requests to compose songs for propagation of the products stocked in their shops i obliged two or three shopkeepers by writing songs for their products in the meanwhile seshama raju came to know about it he was angry and chided me saying since there is vacation for the school now you go away to puttaparthi you are indulging in unnecessary activities by remaining here don't stay here he sent me back to puttaparthi as per his instructions i returned to puttaparthi but i did not stop writing poetry one day some boys came to me and requested satya we are putting up a small play please write the story dialogues and songs for that playlet and help us then i told them okay give me two boys 
I composed some songs and taught them to those boys. In those days, the women started putting a small dot of kunkum on their forehead instead of a big one as per the normal practice and also started wearing thin gold chains instead of a necklace of gold coins. On observing such odd fashions, I composed the following song. How times have changed, my dear boys, how times have changed. Face powder has made its appearance and turmeric has disappeared. How times have changed, my dear boys, how times have changed. Necklaces of gold coins have disappeared and gold chains have come instead. How times have changed, my dear boys, how times have changed. The wrist watches made their entry then for the first time. The Karanam headman of the village started wearing a wrist watch in his left hand and with costly dhotis went about displaying vanity. If anyone wore a wrist watch in those days, he was considered to be a great man. Deriding such vainglorious practices, I wrote the following song. People wear some glittering white badge on the left hand with leather belt tied to it. What fashion is this, oh dear? What fashion is this? Disgusting appearances they are. What fashion is this? Long moustache is trimmed and shaved. Few hairs are kept under the nose instead. What fashion is this, oh dear? What fashion is this? In those days, people used to have small insect-like moustache under their nose. It was called Hitler moustache. It was considered to be a fashion in those days. When the boys sang the song for two days consecutively, the Karanam shaved off his moustache immediately. Thus, I started reforming the elders in the village. I used to observe their weaknesses, compose appropriate songs deriding their behavior, and make the young boys sing those satirical compositions in front of their houses. I tried to bring certain transformation in them. Some of them, however, did not take them sportively and attempted to beat the children. Then, the children used to tell my name as the person who trained them to sing such songs. All of them used to come to our house and complain against me to the Griham Abai. The Griham Abai never bet me or scolded me. He did beat all other children in the house, for example, Janaki Ramaya, Kishtappa, Venkamma and Parvatamma, but not me. He used to counsel me endearingly, My dear son, why should we take the affairs of all the people in the village on our head? Please don't write those songs. I, however, used to pretend as if I knew nothing about it, saying, I don't know who wrote those songs. I am innocent. I used to write such songs and dramas and teach the children good things with a view to dissuade them from being enamored of fashions and inculcate in them our ancient, noble ideas. Once, Subhama came to me and expressed her anguish that her husband was taking to bad ways and getting spoiled. She asked me, Raju, you are teaching so many good things to so many people. My husband is taking to bad ways. Why don't you try to correct him? I told her, I will certainly correct him and bring him back to senses. I will compose some songs using strong words and make the children sing them in front of your house. But you should not feel bad about it. She was afraid that he might get angry. I assured her, Don't worry, one's anger is one's own enemy. I will not be affected by his anger. Subhama's husband used to sit near the Tulasi Brindavan in front of his house every day evening. I composed a song, set it to good tune and taught the same to a group of children. I told them to sing that song in chorus in front of Karanam's house. The children were afraid that he might take them to task for their audacity. I, however, assured them, I will be behind you, protecting you always. You don't be afraid. The name of the Karanam was Narayana Rao. He took to bad ways. He could not be corrected by soft words. It was only by making use of strong language against him that he could be corrected. Hence, I composed the following song and prompted the children to sing the song in front of his house. 
Don't seek the company of women of loose character. Surely you will fall down. Your caste people will not allow you into their homes. Your relatives will neck you out if they see you. Your friends will beat you with chappals if they see you in the company of such women. I wrote this song with such strong words and indirectly warned him to stop this nonsense. When the children were going on the street and singing this song, particularly in front of his house, the Karanam became very angry. He immediately got up and went inside the house. Thereafter, he sent word to his servant to the children to see him. The children were very much afraid that he might punish them severely. He asked them, Who wrote this song for you? They replied, Raju wrote this poem and asked us to sing in your presence. He also knew that it was my handiwork and none else could dare do it. He called me the next day and handed over plenty of mango fruits and requested, Raju, please do not teach such songs to the children. Thereupon, I requested him, Karanam sir, you are an elderly person. You also promise that you will not indulge in such activities. He promised that he would not do such things hereafter. I reciprocated his gesture with a promise that I will not embarrass him by writing such songs. Subama came to know of this incident. She felt very happy. While I was going that side, she came running and fell at my feet. Poor lady! She complimented me for my courage, saying, Satya, you are certainly not an ordinary child. Your physical stature is small, but there is infinite power in you. I have not come across anyone who can oppose the misdeeds of elders with such courage and forthrightness. Later, she told Griham Abai, Venkapa, you are deluding yourself by considering your son as an ordinary school-going lad. This boy has immense potential in him. In course of time, he will set an ideal for the entire world. Don't fall a prey to the Maya illusion under the influence of filial love. You send him to my house. Griham Abai replied firmly, I don't like to give away my son in adoption to others. I will bring up my child with whatever I have. I don't send him to others' houses. Thus, I used to bring about transformation in the elders, though I was a child myself. I used to spend a free and uninhibited life with courage and confidence, for I had no faults in me. Why should one have fear when one was faultless? I had no fear at all. I used to move forward with courage and confidence. In those days, Kameshwari, the mother of Panchangam Ramappa, used to gather some elderly ladies round her and teach spiritual matters. I also used to attend those sessions. She used to read a number of books on philosophy. Though she was not able to understand intricacies of the subjects contained therein, she used to explain to those ladies to the extent she could understand. She was no doubt making a sincere effort, poor lady. For example, she used to discuss in those classes such intricate spiritual topics as the following. Without coming under the veil of forgetfulness, always in the waking, dream and deep sleep states, one should constantly be aware of the Soha Mantra that would enable you to realize the Atma Tattva. By the grace of Sadguru, O man, cultivate the sense of discrimination. She used to make an effort to teach such highly philosophical subjects to totally illiterate women. In those days, very few women had education. Hence, they used to attend the satsanga conducted by such learned elders. I was waiting for an opportunity to approach the elderly woman conducting that satsanga. One day, I was able to contact her. I requested her with all humility and respect. Dear Grandmother, how can those poor illiterate women understand such highly philosophical concepts couched in such high language? It would be better if you can kindly explain to them in a simple language that they can understand, giving out the meanings of those technical terms. 
with a view to inculcate a spiritual bent of mind in the village folk, I established such fora even at that time. I had been explaining the significance and impact of the satsanga to the people since then. Once, a political leader by name Narayana Reddy came to me from Bukkapatnam and requested, My dear, I understand that you write good poetry. If you can write some good poems on our national heroes, we will publish them in the newspapers. That day, they organized a political meeting. I composed the following poem and sang it on the stage placing a rubber doll in a cradle and rocking it gently. Do not cry, my child, do not cry. If you cry, you will not be called a valiant son of Parat. Go to sleep, my child, go to sleep. Did you get scared because the terrible Hitler has invaded the invincible Russia? Go to sleep, my child, go to sleep. Do not cry, my child, do not cry. For the Red Army is marching under Stalin. They will put an end to Hitler. All the countrymen shall unite and fight to win freedom. Go to sleep, my child, go to sleep. Thus, I composed a song picturing a scene as if an infant was crying and the mother was consoling it with an assurance that everything would be all right and there was nothing to worry about the fate of the country. I sang the song in an inspiring tone for about half an hour, keeping in view the freedom fighters. All the audience were happy and their joy knew no bounds. They wondered, how could this young boy know about Hitler, Stalin and Russian heroes? These are all foreign names which none of these people, even elders, do not know. Some police people, Britishers, also attended that meeting. When I was singing the song, they heard it with rapt attention. They could not, however, understand the meaning of the song. It was a song composed in the Telugu language. Nevertheless, they enjoyed the song, appreciating me. This boy is singing well. He is a small kid. When all the audience in the meeting clapped their hands, they also clapped. The meeting thus ended most successfully. Thereafter, the song was printed in a pamphlet and distributed to the people in all the villages. The organizers of the meeting brought me gifts of shirts, trousers and towels as a token of their appreciation and gratitude. But I distributed those items to the children around even before their eyes. I told them, I did not write this song anticipating these gifts in return. I wrote it only to inspire you. I sent them away. Thereafter, several leaders of other political parties approached me for writing songs about the activities undertaken by their parties. I told them frankly, there will be misunderstandings between the parties on account of my writing such songs. I am sorry, I cannot write any more songs for political parties. In fact, I have nothing to do with any political party. All parties are mine. All people are mine. I belong to everyone. By now, people started coming to me in groups. In the meanwhile, Sesha Maraju had returned to Puttaparthi for vacation. He was also a poet. He was undergoing teacher's training then. He observed that everyone in Puttaparthi was discussing about the poetic talents of young Raju. He became jealous of me once again. He thought, this boy should not be allowed to continue here and took me away to Urvakonda, a nearby town along with him, to admit me in the high school there. 